falls on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, of course, thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, yesterday, we were down preaching. I'm just giving this one thing. And, uh, and a girl uh, with the help of her friend was being rolled behind a wheelchair. Uh, and she uh, had her hand uh, was growing out of her elbow. And there are people that are like that, you know, that, that, that have that, these props. It's called something. I don't know what it's called. You got two hands? Let me see tonight. Everybody got two hands? You got problems, and I'm sure you do, and I'm sure they're very serious to you. But at least we don't have uh, what that girl had, and I'm very grateful. I wanted to go talk to her so bad, my heart just really went out to her. But uh, what, what, what am I going to say to her? You know, I'm out on the street, and they were pushing her away. It just broke my heart to see her, and uh, you know, here we are in good health. I appreciate this. I was saved when I was 30 years old, and I've been at this for 50 years now. And that's 80, in case you see me doing this. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29, and I want to uh, uh, I want to preach a message tonight that I call "Honey, uh, Wake Up Your Snoring." My wife wakes me up occasionally and shakes me and says this word, it's honey, wake up, you're snoring. And uh, so I have to go uh, somewhere <laughs> down to the couch. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 29, we are. Let me try to set this up a little bit for you. Verse 9. Nine, nine, the Bible says, Stay yourselves in wonder, crying out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. It's a spirit. Uh, like the Holy Spirit, like the unclean spirits that are out here. It's a spirit. Uh, he has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and that closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers and seers hath he covered, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not uh, learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I'm not learned. What are you asking me to read that for? Uh, Romans in chapter 13, you can stay there probably the better part of the night uh, if you like. Pastor said, I've got two hours, so we'll rest. <laughs> Romans uh, chapter number 13 and, and verse 11. Uh, the Bible uh, said there in that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Let me read that again. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Uh, Father, we ask you now that you fill me with the Holy Ghost and give these people something, Lord. God help them in this life, Lord. This life is so difficult, Lord. It's just one struggle, one heartache after another, and nobody to lay up hand on their shoulder and comfort them and be a blessing to them. Lord, I want to be a blessing to them. And God, if you'll help me now, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, amen. amen. Honey, wake up, you're snoring. Uh, after this successful raid on uh, Pearl Harbor, <clears throat> uh, they came to the commanding general there and uh, 
told him what had happened and they explained all of those things uh, to him. And uh, without going into a, a great deal of thing about that, uh, that general said, gentlemen, I'm, I'm afraid all we have done is to awaken a sleeping tiger. That attack on the United States of America they did, and the way that, uh, that they went about it, I'm afraid all that we have done is to awaken a sleeping tiger. And I want to take that little phrase and I want you to think about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church of Jesus Christ, and you understand I'm not just talking about us here tonight. I'm speaking about uh, the church in general in uh, the Philippines or in China or in Germany or wherever. We're one group or one, by, we are known as the Bride of Christ. And uh, thank God for that. Uh, all, all we have done is to awaken a sleeping tiger. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a rampaging tiger, brethren. When, when she's awake, nothing can stand in the way of the church of Jesus Christ when she's hot for God. Amen. And I want to be hot for God. And I, I want to be holy. I pray, Lord, make me holy. I, 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 and I'm not. And, and it's very disappointing. But nothing can stand in our way when we're hot for God. Are you hot for God tonight? Are you, are you excited about Jesus Christ and serving Him? Uh, nothing in this life is more important than your personal relationship with God. And if you've got that, brother, you can accomplish anything uh, for God. No atheist. Uh, no heretic, no devil from the pit of hell uh, can stop the advance of the tiger of God. Uh, Leviticus chapter 26 said and, uh, that five of you are going to chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will put a thousand to, to flight. Remember, you have no need to be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand how it is. You pull up to the traffic light and it would be you know, like a song leader was saying, the guy's over here. You know, you know, one thing about my generation, you know, we got our problems, and uh, I know, but you can understand the words. Right? <laughs> uh, song of Solomon, uh, uh, oh, in chapter number six there. Uh, Solomon said, I have my beloved, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. Uh, thou art beautiful, O oh, my love, as tears are comely as Jerusalem. Terrible, terrible as an army with banners. That's you guys. Amen. You're terrible as an army right. with banners. Yeah. Don't be shy. Don't go back. I have never, and I preach in a few churches, I have never, never seen more beautiful young ladies than you have in this church. And I've never seen more homely looking guys. So you poor girls, man, I really do feel sorry for you. But we're not going to bring some good looking guys in That's a joke. <laughs> um, so terrible as an army with bands. Uh, but an army, brethren, that's fast asleep, uh, takes no hills, makes no advances on the enemy, wins no battles. Right. And uh, I believe that Matthew 25 uh, best describes the age that we're, this is Laodicea. Yeah. Right. And boy, if you're gonna, you want to fight, the song said fight. Remember that one? Amen. When the choir sang? That's a military song. That's right. That means you get lockstep with some of your brothers and sisters in Christ and serve the general. Amen. And you get in there and get with him. But Matthew 25 says, while the bridegroom tarried. All right? What do you say? They, they slumbered and they slept. 
Uh, Jesus Christ went and prayed and they, they, they couldn't watch. He said, what? You couldn't watch an hour? And uh, they fell asleep. I would have fallen asleep. You know, I mean, we like talking about that. that. People like my Jesus Christ. God, I've been with that crowd. I know. I saved others and so the kids say, <laughs> come down from the cross. You Christ, come on. I know I'm one of them. I got a nasty, nasty disposition. The church of the living God today is a slumbering tiger that desperately needs to be woken up. Amen. And we need to shake ourselves. Amen. When Samson uh, was over there and Delilah cut all his hair off, remember that story? And uh, Samson shook himself and he got up and he said, I'll go out as at other times. But he wished not that God was departed from him. Brethren, don't let God depart out of this church. Yeah. Don't let it. It's up to you. Right. You can stop it by promoting yourself and by keeping yourself encouraged and working for God. Right. God's looking for a few good men. Right. God's looking for a few good women. And I, my wife goes out on the street with me. She's a, a track pass about her. And I'm a preacher. We call ourselves the dream team. She's the dream and I'm the nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so people love her. Everybody loves her wife. We've been married for 40 years. And we've never thought about divorce. <laughs> we've often thought about strangulation. You've got to get along with you women. And God knows that's a full-time job. Uh, uh, but... Uh, brethren, we entertain ourselves um, while the devil envelops this world uh, in sin. Uh, and I say with Paul that it's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. People get tired at night. You know, I do, I go everywhere where there's a crowd. I go all kind of, but where is a group of people? But honestly, there are just sometimes I just don't feel like doing anything. It's just easier just to stay home. Mm -hmm. And my wife said, uh, people are giving you money to do this. <laughs> they support us. And so uh, it's, uh, it, it, the night is far spent. You know, I, I, some of you young people in here, you think uh, life is slow moving. And I, I used to think like that. Uh, but one thing you find out when you get to be an old man like me, somebody done turned the clock up on this thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody wound this thing up tighter. And time is moving, man. Right. You know, it's going. Uh, I get up in the morning, and man, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know where all the time went. And my point is that it's time to line up with this book because you don't have much time left. Right. And if you're over 40 years old, you're going to find out your day goes quick. And, and it's like the Bible said, you know, you're like a weaver show. I don't know, I've never seen one that. But I used to smoke three packs a day so I know what that smoke looks like. It's like a vapor. It appeared that, it's what the Bible says. It's like a vapor. It appears for a little time and it's it's over. It's gone. Right. Where'd it go? And that's your life. Right. And I, I see people all the time out on the street. They got one foot in the graveyard. They got one foot on a banana peel. And they're laughing at me and cussing at me and doing that stuff. I go, hey, Grandpa, you ain't got much time left. Right. Uh, it's, it's gone. And the point is, brother, that I'm trying to make, if you're going to do something for God, right. and you've got it in the back of your heart to move, and to work for God, He's not going to appear to you in your closet, in your bedroom at 12 o'clock at night. You might have to take that Bible and believe what He said. And you know what He said. I don't even have to quote it. you got a pastor who's probably quoted it to you a bunch of times. People, don't look at me with that apple pie, sweet, you know, I'm a good Christian look. I'm, I'm not deceived by that at all. People walk by me on the street and they say, I'm good. You know, no you're not. And neither are you. And neither am I. Brother, we are a wretch. 
We're a, we're a shipwreck. It's already happening. We're just barely staying afloat. Amen. So I only got two points. Not good? <laughs> good. Bad. <laughs> Number one, first point is you're asleep. Sleep. Now, I'm talking to the church in general. Uh, you know, I'm talking to you people, and I'm talking to me. And I want to say, first of all, that if you are male, all right? Hey, Amen. All right, talk to you guys. Why America has become feminized. That's right. And we got guys on the television. But I like classical music. I turn on and every one of them guys is queer. You know, well, we're going to play for you, for you now, Mozart. And, you know, oh, yeah. shut up, man. And it's just absolutely disgusting. Yeah. But we have become feminized, man. That's right. And part of that is because you're trying to, trying to, Make things decent with your wife. My wife told me the other day, she said, you got your ministry, what do I do? I said, baby, your, your ministry, according to the Bible, is to take care of me. Amen? Right. So, you know, so you maybe, you, you know, you don't care for that. You, you don't want to just squish a dish. You know, you want to be in charge. And guys, you are in charge. Yeah, right. Now, whether you like it or not, whether you have subjugated, whether you've given up your... Uh, women want to follow a man. They don't want to follow some guy that can't know his left foot from his right foot. Yes, honey, and what can I do to help you? Uh, oh, oh, you didn't want me to go on the mission trip? Well, no, swear, baby, I won't go if you don't want me to go. Be a man. You got, it's hard to be a man. You women don't know this, except you that are masculinized and want to be a man. But uh, it's difficult to be a man and make these decisions that need to be made, and you're responsible for them. That's right. So what are you going to do? All right, you're asleep. I don't know how I've got to start that. Uh, you're asleep. <laughs> Ephesians, in chapter, you know the verse. Ephesians 5 said, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then as you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen. Redeem the time because you don't have much time left. Yes. It's time to get the book and start obeying the book. Amen. What did the book say? Amen. The book say go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, what are you guys waiting on? Wait for your wife to pick up a Bible and go out in the street and start preaching? No, it's your responsibility to tell people, guys, you're asleep. You need to wake up. And God said, if you're asleep, well, you know, you're like dead. I try not to sleep like that anymore. When I lay down, I always seem to do that. That's not nice. what they do when you're in the coffin. You know, so I put my hands down. <laughs> We don't know how much time we have left. Uh, Christ Himself will give you life. Rise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. Get Him on your side. The Bible said this is a condemnation. That men, you want to know why people go to hell? You want to know why you're living a miserable Christian life and you can't get the victory and you're walking around like you got a cloud over your head? Because the Bible said that Jesus Christ came into this world. This is the condemnation. That light is coming into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. Neither will they come to the light lest their deeds should be reproved. You might look just fine in church. And you look all, you know, smiling at the preacher and blinking and all, you know, all that. But God knows your heart, right. you dirty, wicked. God knows what you are down deep inside of you. Right. Right. Oh, I tell you, brothers, this, this Christian life, you want to fight, you want to battle? This is the fight, brethren. Just like that song said, on to meet the foe, marching as we go. 
You can't march when you're in the lay down position. Um, you want light? Wake up. You got to wake up. You want life? You want something that's exciting? You know, I mean, oh, come to church if you not. I guess you like it. I don't like where I go to church, but I got to go to church. We got three Baptist churches in our city. Now, you know, the one I go to about there is a hammer. But you got to go to church. And talking about that valley, man, I got to. I about got to drag my wife to church. She's got to drag me to church, you know. So uh, the Bible said evil communication corrupts good manners. Awake to righteousness. Don't awake to ungodliness. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. You have an entire state here, brethren. Where people don't have the knowledge of God. You might see you got a good church and you come in here, and I bet you wouldn't miss an ice cream social, and you got a ladies' meeting, and you're at the ladies' meeting, and you got a men's meeting, and the teenager doing the same, you know, that all it's just all wonderful. This world is not like this. Yeah. And those people out there, I think something like every 18 seconds or something, I can't remember. People are committing suicide, they're jumping off bridges, and they're hanging themselves. And one of the main reasons I go out street preaching, because this world needs to see that everybody isn't on rap music and marijuana and not shooting drugs in their arm. There are still some people in America that love God and want to do something for it. Now, I'm not saying that's me. I'm, I'm just struggling along like everybody else. But, uh, but that's one of the reasons I like going out on the street. And it's not like you think it is. You think, oh, people are going to punch me out. Um, 25 years ago, I could go to a college campus and probably get maybe 50 people hanging around. Uh, we're having an open Bible debate on a college campus. Uh, then it started degenerating and they kind of got where they were walking by. Nobody pays any attention to it. That's a great thing. Yes. You can get out there and yell at everybody. They don't, you know, <laughs> you just keep on walking. I like a bunch of zombies. I'm, I'm serious. This is it. You go street preaching, this is it. Just like that. Occasionally, somebody gives me the one way sign with the wrong finger. But, you know, that's, that's, I won't tell you about that. Uh, your associates, you probably have people here that have left this church. One reason or another, I don't know why they left. And you think they got a raw deal, so you, you would just want to keep hanging with them. And you keep talking with me, call them up. You all right now? How is it over your church? You know? You get me? You understand? You need to shut that door. That's, right. That's a bad door. Right. And uh, it'll cause you uh, uh, so many, many problems. You need to awake to righteousness. Part of awakening to righteousness. Brother, I go by myself. Nobody wants to go with me up here. I, I don't mind that. I kind of like it. But, but it, uh, I think it was George Washington said it's better to be alone than to be in bad company. Yes. And so get used to being alone. There's nothing wrong with that. You ain't gotta have everybody hanging around. I listen to these people over at the uh, Culver's, you can be acting and they're saying nothing. Right. They, you know, nothing. So uh, anyway, I wait to righteousness. Uh, brethren, get started with Jesus Christ. Start tonight. Mm -hmm. Tell tell God, look, I, you know. I'm doing the best I can, but maybe I can do better. Amen? Right? Maybe I can do just a bit better. Right. Um, if you miss uh, work as much as you miss church, uh, you'd get fired. Right. Now, that's just a fact of it. If you show as much enthusiasm on your job, give me a hammer. Yeah. Uh, you'd get fired. Right. Uh, come
come to church, get excited. It, it blesses the preacher. It, it bless you. You'll get excited. You, you'll get thrilled. Uh, Proverbs in chapter 6 said, uh, uh, yeah, a little sleep, uh, a little slumber. Ain't that what we say? Well, maybe tomorrow. I got my go next week. Yeah, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands uh, uh, to sleep. Uh, we like to use that, I uh, say a man ought to go to work, but it works for Christians too. And some of you folks in here, God bless your heart, you're sleeping your Christian life away. And you, you need to get started. And it's easy to get started. Uh, my wife passed out track. She's very good at it. I think she's number one in the whole nation, but who knows. Um, there's plenty to do for God. Yeah. There's nursing homes. There's jails. There's street ministry. There's, uh, I, I used to take my dog to a nursing home. You don't believe what that does. <laughs> there are women, you know, they had a woman had not spoken in six months. And I brought Harley in there, and, and uh, she looked at that dog, and she goes, Doggy! And man, she just came alive, and the nurse told me, she said, man, that's, that's more than we've seen out of her in a long time. Uh, but some of you folks are sleeping your Christian life away. I'm, I, look, don't hate me. I, I'm just preaching to you. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to help you. And here's the thing, when you you need to get going for God because if we got the judgment seat of Christ going on Amen. right after you kick the bucket. All right? right. right. Now there's, uh, what is it, five crowns. Is that right, Sunday school teacher? Right. Right. <laughs> five crowns you can win. And you ain't going to get them sitting in front of the television set. <laughs> uh, amen. You need to uh, kind of get started. And uh, one day you'll wake up and uh, you'll be spiritually bankrupt. And you'll stand in front of God. Well, you know, step aside. I got somebody coming up here that was a little more active uh, than you. Um, so you're asleep. Uh, second point, you need to wake up. Amen. Uh, do you know that there are stages to waking up? I don't, I don't jump out of bed in the morning. I got a little routine that I do and stuff, but, uh, but I don't jump out of bed uh, and get going in either you. It takes, it takes a little while to get up and get going. Uh, in Jonah, I said the mariners uh, were afraid and cried every man to his God. He said, what did thou, O sleeper? He said, now get up, pray to your God. What are you doing? And uh, Jonah was down, you know what he was. And, uh, but, uh, listen, brother, other people on the sea of life uh, are afraid. Uh, just like these mariners. They, 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 they were afraid and they cried to their God. People have all kinds of gods. They got the Catholic God, they got Mary, you know, they got Buddha, they got, they got all these gods, you know, and they're praying. And sometimes the devil helps them out and, you know, to keep them in line and he'll answer some of this stuff. Uh, but the mariners were afraid. And brother, these other people that you pass on the street, why did you get saved? Anybody want to? You can talk to me. Why did you get saved? Sir, somebody? You don't, you don't have to be afraid. I'm not going to jump. For your family? Yeah. Save the sir. Uh, I just talked to a preacher. He said, look, the reason I got saved because somebody told me about hell and I didn't want to go. And I, I, I don't know, uh, you know uh, why you got saved, but here you are if you're saved and uh, you know, you, you're you doing the best that you can. Do you know that uh, hell is still real just because you got saved? Do you know that hell is still a real place? It's right underneath your feet down there. And people that die without Jesus Christ are still going there. Right. Well, you know, I have some mercy now. Trying right. to help somebody. Somebody helped you. Mm -hmm. Somebody got a Bible or somebody took you to church or somebody gave you a gospel track. 
And uh, don't, don't let people go to hell, for that's a terrible place. Uh, they're laboring. They're taking the Jesus cookie, you know. They're trying to do good works. They're praying and Mary. They're doing all of that because they don't know what to do. Right. Because some of you haven't told them. Because some of you folks haven't gotten up off your lazy high hand and just give them a gospel trial. Um, I've been giving out these little pocket New Testaments. You wouldn't believe how people love them things. You know, they, they walk by and say, hey, Doc, it, it, uh, can I give you some? You know, have you ever seen one of these? Would you like to have it in a little pocket? Man, give it to me. Uh, I gave out every one I had. I was at the Sturgis motorcycle thing. And uh, I gave out every one I had. Everybody wanted one. Uh, they're laboring and they're perishing. And, and where's the one that can help them? <clears throat> Don't be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're asleep. Uh, where's the one that has the truth? Where's the one on the job that we can go to? Where's the one that I laughed at and, and I didn't want any more to do with her? Because every time I took a break, she was trying to open up a Bible and tell me, you're the one they're going to go to. You can count on that. Once they get into a showing up valley, like the song said, they'll come to you. Uh, well, uh, you need to wake up. That's all I'm going to say. That's my second point. Luke 9 said, but Peter... They that were with him were heavy with sleep. When they were awake, they saw his glory. You know why church is boring to you? Because you're asleep. Because, because it's not real to you. People, people memorize the Bible. And, and, they, uh, and, and they read the Bible. But they don't know God. There's another whole world out here. And it's almost like getting saved again. You, you've got this uh, a treasure in an earthen vessel. I don't know how to tell you to do it. Just pick up and get going and get started and the Lord will do the rest of it. But it says when they woke up, they saw God. My God, wake up and get going with God. Wake up. And get God to notice you. I, I noticed something. Man, I don't know what that time started. Uh, I got. A, I, I was reading about Moses and uh, how he's coming out there with Jethro and coming out of the land of Midian. That's that bush. And uh, I hope this makes sense to you. It makes sense to me, but I'm kind of weird. Uh, but he's coming down there and there's this bush. Now he could have just said, "Man, he's got something." Just kept on walking. And that's what a lot of people do with the things of God in, in 2024. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's good. That's good for you and ain't good for me. Right. But Moses stopped to see. Right. And he got to look at it and he was wondering, what's going on? The bush ain't burning. The bush ain't consumed. And the Bible said that when, when God was looking at Moses walking past that bush, and when God saw that Moses stopped to see, right. then God revealed himself to him. Amen. Right. And I, man, this Chicago's a nightmare. Right. But brethren, you're going to have to find some way to slow down and go over to the bush. Amen. You're going to have to go over and take a look at that bush and say, boy, and God will come and make himself known to you. Amen. But you're in too big of a hurry. You think more of your job and your lawn and your grocery shopping and your handbags and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Peter said when he woke up, boy, Master, it's good to be here. <laughs> I've been in uh, church services, brother, when I got so drunk, man, I was so drunk, and, and I woke up uh, from my drunk and I was swinging from the chandelier. here, got that good. I mean, it was wonderful. And the Spirit of God was in that place. Man, people were running around and diving over pews, and I was slamming like a bell uh, from the place. That's available. Maybe not every Sunday. 
put it to bed. Now, get over that preacher. Get over my preacher. I'm, I, honestly, God, I'm trying to help you whether you think so or not. Your pastor, every time he's stringing, he stands up. He's trying to help you. He's trying to tell you something. Believe it or not, your pastor knows some stuff you don't know. Believe it or not, he's been kicked in the teeth enough. He knows what's coming before it even happens. And some of you folks, honestly, God, you strained at so many gnats and you swallowed so many camels. Uh, and you just get upset and you murmur. I, I, I believe it. I, I believe you might just have a big camel puking uh, uh, service, and everybody come up to the altar and just blah, just puke out all them camels. Amen. Puke out all that gnats and get right with God. Uh, John 11 said, "These things saith He." And after uh, that, He saith them, "Our friend Lazarus." Sleepless. But I'll go and wake him up. And he woke him up. And he can wake you up. Right. And you think, boy, oh, I, I feel like I'm all right. Yeah, I, I know. I know you do. And, uh, I, you know, God bless you. But there's another life. Uh, let me tell you, uh, sleepers, what Jesus uh, uh, told his friends. You're dead. That's what he said. That's right. <laughs> You're dead. You got no compassion. The only thing you're interested in is your wife, your whatever, your home, your lawn, your hair. You like mine? Damn. <laughs> you got no burden. Yeah. There's something wrong, bro. I'm, trying, I'm just trying to tell you there's something wrong. Amen. You get started going, let me finish up with this now. I'm not done. Uh, and you're not faithful to anything but yourself. And when it comes to the church, I can take back seat, man, because i got something else to do. Uh, you're dead. But thank God that Jesus Christ can come and make uh, a wake you out of your sleep. That's what he did with my Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. He can do it for you. Our song, our text says, knowing uh, the time that now, now, not next, not tomorrow, no. now, uh, it's time to wake up and sleep. Amen. And you're going to have a struggle. Uh, but, but the Lord will help you. And try to be faithful to some commitment. Make, make tell God, Lord, I, I'm not satisfied. Well, what is this? I'm not happy. I wake up in the morning and there's a fog over my head. I can't even think straight. Lord, what's going on? Why can't I get excited about, about Jesus Christ? Why can't I get thrilled about the, about the church, about the things and the programs and the, the people out there that are dying and going to hell? Why can't I? Uh, for God's sake, won't you come on? Will you stir yourself up, brethren? Uh, will you wake up? Will you do the right thing? Isn't it, isn't it about, seriously, isn't it about high time that you woke up out of sleep? Right. Isn't it? Uh, honey, wake up. You're snoring. Let me, close, let me close with this. And I'll just tell you this little story. True story. Preacher was getting ready for it. A revival service. He was at his house and he was getting his messages together, getting his suit on, making sure everything was clean. Phone rang and he picked the phone up. And there was a female voice on the other hand. And she said, Pastor, um, this is so and so, gave him, gave him a name. And she said, I heard you preach. Oh, so many years ago now. I, I can't remember how many years, but uh, I'm, I'm a drug addict now, and, and I've got AIDS, and I'm dying. And she said, Pastor, I, I, I want to hear you preach one more time before I die. Can I come? 
I promise I won't be in any trouble. Please, preacher. Can I just come and hear you preach just one more time? Please. And just a young lady that just wasted up, thought she was doing the right thing, just followed the crowd. She said, preacher, can I just come? I'll sit in the back. I won't bother anybody. I won't even talk to anybody. And the fourth night of that revival service, that poor little girl that was dying of AIDS got up out of her seat and came down to an altar and they led her to Jesus Christ. Amen. That blesses my heart uh, every time I think about it. Well, brother, listen. Thank you so much for putting up with me. And I love this church. And love you guys. I still pray for you, by the way. And uh, so praise the Lord Jesus. I ask you come.